Welcome to another edition, the latest edition of Sunday Night Overtime with Coach Clays. We're brought to you by the Minnesota Lottery. Thanks for joining us here on Facebook Live. Alongside the head coach, Tracy Clays, I'm Justin Gard from KFAN Radio and the sideline reporter for the Gopher Radio Network. Coach, it's good to see you. I know how you felt about the game yesterday as we talked on the Gopher Radio Network. As you looked back at it 24 hours later, how would you think it went against Colorado State? You know, I, I do think we played better in some aspects than we did the week before. Um, the penalties were, were down, still too many, and, and a couple of them that were foolish that we have to take care of. Uh, defensively, overall, is the third downs we, we played really well. And uh, I think they were five of 15, and three of them were really short yardage, so really two of 12 in passing situations. But it was the, the first and second downs, and we gave up too many big plays, and, and some of those was missed tackles, and a few of them was missed assignments. But uh, uh, overall, I do think we improved, but defensively, we, we've got to improve more going into the Big Ten. A reminder that on this show, we're here for you, the people watching us live. We hope that you're putting some questions into the comments section on your Facebook page, and we'll get to those in our second segment, as well as a couple of Twitter questions here in just a minute. You got Shannon Brooks back, and you got to him to play a little bit. I know it was important for you to get him to play yeah. before conference season. It seemed like you had a great one-two punch going with Rodney and Shannon yesterday. Yeah, I mean, the running game up front, uh, yeah, we got blitzed on about every play when you go back and watch the film. They were sending somebody from about every play, and the old line did a good job of creating some creases. And, and you know, I don't think Rodney gets the credit for being as physical a runner as right. he is. I mean, he really does. He's tough to tackle and runs hard. Shannon, everybody knows that that's how he plays. He hurt himself a little bit. There's a couple plays early on where he gets to the line too quick. He's in, in so excited and ready to play that he missed a couple cuts. He had a little bit more, but uh, those two did a great job. And Kobe late in the game, yep. caught a big uh, screen pass on a third down. And, and so all, all our backs contributed and played well. And it's amazing the timeliness of some of those runs where Shannon maybe didn't have it going early. He really gave you a big boost when you may have needed it there early in the second half, right? Yeah, no question. You know, the one thing that offensively we continue to do is, is answer the other team's scores in the second half especially and and that that's important and have a 94 yard drive and and um, just keep is if they put on points there's nothing worse than going back and letting the other team score points again and and so our offense has really done a good job of that on the other side of the ball a highlight continues to be Tayon Devers performance another high impact play yesterday yeah. whenever he gets in the score sheet it's a sack it's a tackle for loss it's a fumble it's a turnover what can you say about him that already hasn't been said? Yeah, you know, he's a tremendous athlete and very explosive, and obviously he likes to, to play football. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll try to expand his role as the year goes on and, and the more that uh, he grows and, and understands things. But he is a true freshman. Um, but overall, you know, again, you know, we had three sacks yesterday. I think we had, in, in, with that, 14 tackles for losses. And so we're making some big plays on defense. You know, it's getting to where we don't give up uh, the big plays. And everything's on films correctable. It's not like we're getting out athleted or anything like that. And part of that is after the, after, during the bye week is we went and shortened our package down a little bit and, and decided, hey, here's what we're going to do. And so now, for, from here on out, we should continue to improve on that. Let's stay on the defensive side of the ball. We're going to go to our first Twitter question. A reminder, Facebook questions will be next segment, so we hope you're filing those away. At St. Paul Gulf is our first Twitter question. He wants to talk defense. A little bit of 3-4 yesterday and, yeah. and even some other things mixed in as well. Is that going to be the new base, even maybe with Coughlin out, or how much do you want to mix that in? You know, it's not going to be the new base. I mean, I just don't think you can base out of a 3-4 and stop all the stuff that you see in college football and you know we had the one penalty for 12 on the field because they got a first down on us in in the three four and we tried to get back to regular personnel and and they hurried the line and we couldn't so uh, uh i think you know it's got some weaknesses to it so it's good it's great even for certain situations it's not so good for other situations so when when it's appropriate and we feel like it helped it is going to be a part of what we do this year Next Twitter question is from at JJWall14. I think this has to do with a fourth down play where you stopped them on third down. Yeah. They get the punt, and he wants to know where you're expecting it or what happened on that play. Yeah, you know, we every time, you know, we weren't conscious that there could be a fake punt, especially there late in the game. We were up by two scores, but, uh, I, you know, you draw it up and, and you have everybody covered. And each week, I mean, we spend a lot of time on punt and punt block. That's probably the two we spend the most time on. and. And we always mix in fakes, and I told staff, I guess we'll have to mix in a couple more of them, you know, and, 
and to make sure the kids stay alert of them. But uh, they did a good job of executing what they put together. But when you work on fakes, it's all about uh, ghosts because you don't know what they're going to do or how right. they're going to draw them up. And, and they got us on that one, and, and uh, we'll go back to work on it this week. On the preparation angle, I mean, this goes back to Coach Kill, how much time you guys spend on special team stuff. And they've been important for you no matter where you've been. You sp it's not for lack of time spent when this stuff happens. Sometimes they just get you. Right. So, you know, they guess right. Or, you know, we have a guy out of position, and, and they made a good play on us. Uh, you know, overall, special teams, uh, you know, I thought Emmett Carpenter continues to do really well. We have to punt the ball a little better. The ball was more in the middle of the field. We need to keep it out of the middle of the field for some return yardage. And then, like I say, the, the, the fake uh, a punt. Uh, so uh, we'll spend a little bit more time on that. But as you said, we, we spend quite a bit of time on special teams and it's a matter of executing. One more Twitter question. Nate, I believe. Nate, we'll go with Mason, even though it's M-E-S-O-N. Wants to know about the underclassmen in terms of exceeding expectations. You mixed in a lot more underclassmen yesterday. What would you think? Yeah, you know, if you start on the offensive side, and I'm sure to forget somebody here, right. you know, but uh, Colton Beebe's been a tremendous, uh, done a lot better at the H back and fullback with the blocking and catching of plays. And then Tyler it, uh, Johnson has done a good job for us with, with uh, catching balls and, and uh, how far along he is being, being a true freshman. And then you know, on defense, Kamal Martin has played well. Carter Coughlin played better yesterday. Uh, uh, did some nice things, ended up getting injured and probably be out a couple weeks, but but, but he's played uh, well over there. And then uh, um, Antoine Winfield, you know, is a true freshman in the secondary, just gets better and better. And of course, he's got one of the best teachers <laughs> in, in that his dad was such a great player and, and then um, worked with, with uh, Coach Savell and Coach O'Brien in the backfield. So um, uh, I think those are the ones that, oh, and then, of course, Tayon, you, you know, is that uh, in, in special situations for third downs, he's made a huge difference when he's in there. Because even the ones he hasn't got there, they're awfully aware of where he's at now. And, and uh, he's going to have to get used to getting cut a little bit. That's when he got banged up is they took a running back to him and, and cut him on his plays. And so uh, it's things like that he's going to have to anticipate that probably when they put a back on him, he's going to get cut and he needs to protect himself a little bit. But, uh, you know, that, that's a pretty good group that, that uh, has contributed, and I'm sure there's a few more in there. Those are the Twitter questions that we had solicited earlier today. A reminder, you can send those in all day on Sunday. We'll call over them, go through them, and hopefully Coach Clays will get an opportunity to ask them or answer them. Uh, we've got Facebook questions to get to in a minute, but if you weren't here at TCF Bank Stadium yesterday, you missed a lot. So here you go. We're going to catch you up with Sights and Hill out of the gun. Blitz comes from Martin. Hit. Ball in the air. It's loose. And the Gophers recovered. A couple of things stand out about those sights and sounds. Rashad still looks healthy, number one, yeah. and pretty good camera placement by Gopher Digital Productions there on the Devers hit, right? That's pretty solid. No, no question. We, we have a great digital crew here. Not too bad. Uh, we've got plenty of Facebook questions to get to here in our final minute or two with Coach Clays. Let's start with Lance. And uh, I know Lance wanted to talk about Brooks a little bit. He got his first game action, something that was important. What did you think? How he, you know, obviously you've talked a little bit about how he played. Yeah. How do you think he came out of it health-wise? I, I think he, he came out of it pretty good. Like I say, he started the game in too big a hurry, so he missed a few cuts he, if he'd have been a little bit more patient. But uh, I just came over from practice, and we had 30-minute practice, and uh, he handled it really well. And, and so uh, the more reps he gets, obviously you can get caught up to game speed. It'll make us better. And, and like I say, we're starting to look at ways to get those guys on the field at the same time because I think uh, – you know, that's our best personnel is, is to have a couple of them on there at times. And so even though our wide receivers have played well, 
you know, is uh, I think there's a couple other options there we can look at. Our next question via Facebook is from Michelle talking about the uh, red zone offense, something that's been really good for you guys so far this season. What leads into that efficiency for you? Well, you know, I think John was a little upset because he had a, a perfect bonus. Record. He had a bonus his contract. They went the whole season perfect, so you know that kind of got messed up. But no, no I, he, you know, offensively uh, they've done a good job, and, and you know we do two red zone live sessions every week in practice. And some people think that's a little bit crazy, but to me, the, the hits are pretty much under control to, to go down there. And I think it's important you get a little bit of live work. And, and so the more you work down there, I think the better off that you are. But uh, the, the offensive staff's done a great job on the film study of anticipating the way people will line up and, and taking advantage of it. And can I assume what's bugging them today might be first and goal from the three where you guys don't get in and yes. settle for a field goal. Obviously, you still get points out of the deal, but that's right. something that's going to bug coaches, right? Right, no question. We, we should have ended up getting the touchdown on all of them. That's the points we left on the board to keep us from, you know, again, we, we like to get in that mid-30s range uh, as an average, and, and uh, you know, that little mistake kept us from getting there yesterday. Our next Facebook question comes from Josh. First time you're hitting the road this year, which is a little different because we're almost to October, and you're playing at Penn State where there's going to be 100,000 plus people. Nobody on this team has ever been there, so this question right. could be for everybody, not just the younger players. Right. How do you prepare them this week to get ready to go into a pretty hostile environment? Well, you know, the main thing is a really good sound system. <laughs> you know, is that uh, we'll go inside in the offense and we, we've got a good sound system. and. That's what you want to be able to make sure the snap gets off on time and everything's on time. So we'll spend a lot of time working in the sound, a lot louder than what it can be there. And, and uh, but yeah, I don't know, football's football, you know. And I guess you could say the same thing two years ago. We went into Michigan and, and our young kids played awfully well on that day and we were able to win. And, and uh, last year, you know, at Ohio State, we had some young guys play pretty good. And, and it's all in your preparation, you know, it really is. And, and the good thing is we get to the stadium about two and a half hours early and no different than I was at Ohio Stadium walking around going, wow, you know, there's Woody Hayes' right. tribute, there's Paul Brown's, you know. They get to walk around for a good 30 minutes or so. And, and uh, But, you know, everybody dreams of being able to compete in those types of stadiums that are traditionally important to the game of football. And, and so, uh, hey, it, but I will just preach and preach. It's still a game of football. Each play, do what you can control. And, Play your hardest and don't quit, and, and, and we'll have an opportunity. So, uh, but in the end, you don't know how they're going to react. Our last question of the night from Facebook along those lines is preparation. Robin wants to know what you're going to emphasize in practice this week. Maybe let's start defensively. What's a thing or two you're looking to emphasize? Well, they got a good running back, and the running backs hurt us here a couple games, whether it's through catching the ball or running the ball on some long runs. So we, we got to defend the tailback a lot better. And uh, they're going to speed things up a little bit, and, and so we got to be able to handle the quickness of the no huddle that they're going to do. So, uh, and, and you know, get rid of the big plays. You know, I mean, uh, hey, we're going to have one every now and then, but we can't have 15 plays that get 15 yards or more. And uh, uh, so that'll be the things defensively. And, and you know, uh, special teams overall, we play well, but it's the placement of the ball. Like I said, we need to put the punts closer to the boundary so we don't have to cover the whole field. And and then um, on offense, like I say, the, the main thing is going to be the noise, you, you know, is is we're going to have to handle the noise so we don't have a bunch of procedural penalties and, and everybody knows what's going on with their communications. We've done a good job of adjusting to all the blitzes. It makes it more difficult the louder that that is. Right. And so the, the noise will be a big thing and is always taking care of the football. We've done a decent job taking care of the football. and. When you play on the road, you definitely, you know, you can't have turnovers. We've touched a little bit on Penn State in that answer, but maybe just generally as we wrap up the show tonight, Coach, you know, what you've seen from them here the first month of the season, what's going to be important uh, for you guys to win on Saturday, first road game? Well, like I say, we're, we're going to have to take away the, the, the tailback for sure and, and make them go to something else, you, you know. And, and uh, But while you do that, it's easier said than done. You can't give up the big plays. Right over the top and, and, and so uh, they're a challenge in the fact of, of playing a little cat and mouse game of how many guys are in the box and, and how many are in coverage and and uh, they do a lot of checking at the line of scrimmage so you know it, it, it'll be a challenge for us but the main thing is we got to play fast do our jobs and, and play physical and, and keep the ball in front of us on defense uh, but their offense with the speed of it and they always spread the field on you um, if, if you miss tackles it turns into big plays. Well, have a good week of preparation. It's good to see you as always, and we'll talk to you a week from tonight. Yeah, thanks for having me.
That's the head coach, Tracy Clays. This has been Sunday Night Overtime with Coach Clays. We're brought to you by the Minnesota Lottery. A reminder, we're here every Sunday night now. No more bye weeks. It's a 10-week sprint to the end of the season. So join us every Sunday at 7 o'clock right here on the Gopher Fo uh, Football Facebook page. Get your questions in on Twitter and get your questions in on Facebook. For all of us here at Sunday Night Overtime with Coach Clays, have a great rest of the weekend.